God bless you, family. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless. Look, I'm babbling. Amen. It's early for me. So listen, what is your calling? Amen. What is the will of God for your life? A lot of people always ask those questions because they're good questions. And after a while, sometimes you think, you wonder, right? You're like, so why am I going through this, that, and a third if I'm called by Christ? So I'm calling this one Christ Calling. Today's Friday, so we're getting into Authentic Imitationology. This is episode number 73. Can you believe it? 73 times getting in Authentic Imitationology, which is basically saying, let's imitate the most successful person who has ever lived on this planet Earth, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus of Nazareth, amen. The Lord of the scriptures, the Lord of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Lord on high. Christ calling, we're called to be like Christ, right? We're called to be conformed into his image, into his likeness, amen, because we are one with him. When If Jesus is one with the Father, amen, make no mistake, you are one with Christ. There's a union there. It's not like Jesus on, on, on the outside. Like he's beside us or behind us or in front of us. Yeah, technically he is too, but he lives in us by way of Holy Spirit God. Amen. So we have what we need to live this life out and we're called by Christ. So I'm calling this one Christ calling, not the Christ calling is Christ calling. Amen. Good morning, Sister Joanne. I see you. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome back to the morning Devo, my sister, and my friend. So let's do this. Let's ask the questions that are that are necessary to ask. Right? Let's be honest with ourselves first, and then we can be honest with other people as well. What is your work that God has called you to do? You individually. But remember, we can't do this by ourselves. But if you have an individual call, and I have an individual call, let's do the work for the Lord, right? And then when we come together, it'll just make things more powerful. There's power in numbers. Calling this one, Christ calling. What is your work that God has called you to do? You ever thought about that? Like, what am I here for? What's the purpose? What's the will of God for my life? Those type of questions, amen, sometimes will keep you up at night. But we have a, a God who answers, amen. We have a God who answers. We have a God who responds. We have a God who, if he promises you something, he will come through with that promise. We have a God that's worth fighting for, that's worth fighting the good fight of faith, amen. We have a God who lives, a God who understands, a God who forgives, a God who has mercy, a God who has grace, a God who knows our hearts and loves us anyway, knows our thoughts and loves us anyway. God is faithful. He's good. So Christ calling today on the Morning Devo, Authentic Imitationology, Friday Sessions. John chapter 17, verse number four is where we're going to be. So go to your Bible app, go to your Bible. If you have a, a printed Bible, I suggest those printed Bibles will be something that you'll invest in um, very soon because pretty soon these printed Bibles Amen. Online, digitized Bibles, they're going to be changed. They're slowly but surely, they're being, <coughs> excuse me, they're being changed as we speak. You know, subtly, you know, not, not really like blatantly. Some Bibles are blatantly changing. Some people are, are adding scriptures to the Bible, adding the Constitution of the United States, adding this, adding that. And people are all into that stuff. I, I like the old school scriptures, amen, getting into the word of God, a physical book, amen, so that way you know, unless there's some technology I don't know about, but I don't think nobody could jump into a printed word, a printed Bible, and start changing words, right? Unless there's some tech that I don't know about, like I said. And um, of course, you could just highlight it up, man, put um, notes in it, um, reminders, everything, man, get into this word, this word will change your life, will save your life, will transform your life. Look at the Proverbs, man. Um, one time I said, listen, I'm going to go through a proverb a day and I'm going to really, really dissect this. And I just started taking notes and I'm just scribbling all through it. People say, you can't write in the Bible. I brought it so I can write it. Amen. And um, this one is a, a good Bible. It's the John C. Maxwell, um, New King James Version Leadership Bible. Amen. So get yourself a good Bible, a book, a printed Bible, amen, um, because you have a calling, a Christ calling, amen, and you could be who God called you to be without putting any pressure on yourself, amen, if that makes any sense. So let's go forward. We're going to pray first. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave it on the live chat. That's what we're here for. If you're listening 
uh, on Soul Winners with a Z dot O-R-G. Welcome back. Um, shout out to Colorado. Um, shout out to, um, man, I forgot to put the list down again. There was five. I like to mention the five states that are listed in Pennsylvania, Colorado, Texas, Florida, and I forgot the last one. But shout out to all the listeners at Soul Winners with a Z dot O-R-G. Celebrator Network. Right, the Lehigh Valley's number one urban gospel music station. We've been online since 2008. So let's pray first. After we pray, we'll share this out for like 60 seconds. And then on the other side of those 60 seconds, amen, uh, we'll get right into today's um, Bible study. Amen. The Morning Devo here on the Morning Devo. So, Father, I thank you so much for doing what you do. You are the only one that's capable, the only one that has the ability to transform lives. Uh, to make things that were old new, um, to forgive us for our trespasses and leave the trespasses in the past. You don't remind us of our past, Lord God. You remind us of our future, and you continue to love us regardless. Thank you for understanding what we do, who we are. Thank you for calling us to a greater purpose, for a greater purpose. Thank you for using each and every one of us as part of the body of Christ, Um, those who are the feet, legs, arms, uh, eyes, but we never could be the head because you are the head, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing us into your family, for for adopting us into the forever family that you have planted uh, these seeds of eternal life in our hearts for eternity. Thank you, Lord God, that we are called for a purpose. We are called for a plan. We are called for such a time as this. And you don't make no mistakes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm not a mistake and my friends and family, they're not mistakes. Or we are purposely planned to be here for a season and a reason and a purpose. So I pray, Lord God, a hedge of protection over my mind physically, emotionally, and spiritually, over my family's minds physically, emotionally, and spiritually, over my friends, my supernatural friends, my normal friends, my family members, those who are spiritually um, under the guidance of me or under the guidance of a pastor or a leader or an evangelist or apostles or prophets or teachers. Thank you, Lord God, for placing us all under good, sound doctrine. And I pray for faith. I pray for victorious thoughts. I pray for the victory of God to be in our, our inspiration today for our calling. And I thank you for the Christ of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Christ Jesus that saves us and rescues us from all unrighteousness and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name, we pray this by faith. And all those who agree, we say amen and amen. So let's go for it. 60 seconds. When we come back, when we come back, we'll dive right into the scripture, which is John chapter 17, verse number four. I'll be right back. back those 60 seconds go by so fast the days go by so fast the weeks are like years right the weeks the years are like weeks now right and the days are like minutes now right it's crazy how time is just flying by flying by my beautiful wife says amen beautiful prayer morning blessings to everyone amen so let's go for it john 17 verse number four do you know that we're called by christ to do something that you might think is impossible for us to do, and we're gonna I'm gonna prove that it is possible, and it's very easy to make things known when you read the scriptures. Whatever our and when we read the scripture, because the scripture the scripture is inspired by the Word of God, the Word of God is inspired by God, the Father, right? So every time you read the scriptures, that Bible, 
um, the Bible doesn't contain the scriptures. The Bible is the scriptures. The, Bi- the Bible doesn't contain the word of God. The Bible is the word of God. So if you look at it like that and you're inspired by Holy Spirit that's in you, every time you read the word, since it's active and alive, you'll start understanding more and more and more. You don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to have a, a, a doctorate a doctorate in divinity or anything like that. All of those things might not hurt, right? You know, but you don't have to have those things. If you have Holy Spirit, teacher, God inside of you, amen, he will lead you into, and guide you into all truth and teach you all truth. There's never a time that God's going to lie to you or lie to me, amen. He always speaks truth. He's always full of light, never full of darkness, amen. Uh, we can trust him. We can trust God at his word and take God at his word and and place the word in front of you every single day and see what happens in your life. Amen. Um, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That's what the scripture says. And we are made um, fearfully and wonderfully. We're made. God has his eyes on you and God has his eyes on me. Amen. And to some that's like, wow, I don't want him to look. Well, he's looking anyway. He loves you. He loves me. Amen. So we can continue working the things out that God wants us to work out. Uh, and it's nothing to make up, nothing to fantasize about. It's everything that has truth and everything that's righteous, everything that's good, everything that is loving, kind, everything that is worth living for. Amen. Is found in the scriptures. Uh, amen. And you get inspired by that, just like I'm inspired by it every time I read it. So let's go for it. Authentic imitationology. Amen. I try to do these every Friday. I try to switch gears on the devos and try to do these every Friday. Um, and we keep it like that. Amen. There goes my there goes my cursor. Find my cursor. Christ calling. The Bible says in John seventeen four. I have glorified you down here. This is the Lord Jesus speaking. I have glorified you, Father, down here on the earth by completing the work that you gave me to do. Very personal. Amen. Very personal scripture. Very personal uh, quote from Jesus. If you read John 17, there you'll have the prayer that Jesus made for us um, to hear out loud. So we're called, according to what Jesus is saying here, he's called to glorify the Father. And guess what we're called to do? Once we're born again, once we're saved, we are called to glorify the Father. Just like the calling that Jesus had and Jesus did, we are called to glorify the Father. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. Now the question is, what glorifies God? Doing his work. Amen? It's not... It's not that complicated. I know people want to get super theological. Amen. That's sorry. That's another scripture there. I didn't mean to do that. Oh no, that is the second scripture I have for us. But let's let's keep here for a second. A lot of people over complicate the scriptures, in my opinion. Glorifying part, yes. Let's go glorify the Lord Jesus. Yes. How do you do that? Oh, you have to go to seminary. You have to be a pastor, or evangelist, a possible prophet, a teacher. No, nowhere does it say you have to be those things. Actually, those things that I just spoke of and listed, those are gifts from God. And he divvies out the gifts. Amen. The calling of God is for us to glorify him. Calling Christ is to call, glorify Jesus. And what glorifies God? Doing his work. Doing the work he has called you to accomplish but I can't do it yeah I can't do the work either on my own that's why he indwells in us that's why he dwells in us he fills us by way of his Holy Spirit if he calls you to do something I could probably guarantee you that you're not qualified to do what he called you to do according to the world system standards but when God qualifies you when he calls you amen get ready You'll be able to accomplish anything that the Lord asks of you because he fills you with the strength to get it done. He fills you with the understanding, wisdom, knowledge to get it done. He doesn't say, okay, Sam, go ahead and do something and then turns away and starts handling somebody else and just leaves me like that to figure it out. I don't know how many times I've said it out of my own mouth. I'm trying to figure this out. When the scriptures is there, it's an open book test. What am I trying to figure out? Amen. 
And if you're thinking that way, I got to figure this out. It's an open book test. We have the scriptures. We have the answers. Amen. You know, you ever took an open book test, the questions on the front, and then the, the key, you know, the answer key is in the back. And like, I got to figure this out. And people are looking at you like, um, it's an open book test. Like, if you need the answers, just turn the page. So all we have to do is turn the page of the scriptures. Need the answers? Turn the page and you'll find the answers. Doing his work, doing the work he has called you to do and accomplish. When Jesus came to the earth, right, he glorified the Father by accomplishing the work he was called to. The question is, what did Jesus come to this earth to do? A lot of people to this very day think that Jesus came to this earth to condemn the world. I'm going to go down there and I'm going to condemn everyone. When the scriptures are clear in John chapter 3, verse 16, and keep on reading from there, it says that Jesus did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. And if you don't believe in him as Christ, as Savior, you condemn yourself. Right? So Jesus is saying, I got my hands off your condemnation. I didn't come to condemn you. I came to save you and rescue you. I came to do the Father's will. I came to spread the kingdom message. I came to redeem. I came to restore what was broken, to fix what was broken between man and God because of what happened in Genesis chapter 3. You know, Genesis chapter 3, people say, if God knew that Adam and Eve was going to sin, why would he set them up that way? If God knew that the serpent was going to talk to Eve and deceive Eve, why would he set them up that way? No, God, Eve, I believe he didn't know what was going to happen, but he gave choice. He gave choice. He gave us a choice um, to not do something or to do something, to believe or not to believe, to follow him or not to follow him, to love him or not to love him. That's a choice. Love or requires choice. If I ask you, if I force somebody to love me without choice, that's not love, that's dictatorship. You're not going to like that either. Why would God force, why did God force me into heaven? Why did God force me to do his will? Why did God force me to read his scriptures? That's dictatorship. There's no choice in that. Since God is love, God gives choice. Let's get back to another scripture here. Uh, I thought I, I made a mistake, but I forgot I had two scriptures here. Mark chapter 10, verse 45 Mark 10, 45 says, For even the Son of Man, Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. I don't know anybody, including myself, if I'm honest, that would give their life as a ransom. If I'm innocent of something, it's hard for me to think that I would die for somebody who's guilty. But Jesus... It's a different level, top tier. He is God, man. Even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom to many. Why? Because he had a calling on his life. Why would you even think about that? Because we have a calling on our lives. Amen. We know what we need to do. It's just that a lot of times, amen, I'm just speaking for my eyes. We are hesitant to do what God calls us to do because we don't want to be rejected. We don't want to be misunderstood. We don't want people to think we're crazy. Amen. Um, I pray over people radically. Amen. And then after the prayer, a lot of times they say, you do this? To you? you do these prayers? I say, yeah, because I believe that God is a radical God to serve. Right. An easy God to serve. And I also know that the enemy is radical at what he does. He's trying to kill, steal and destroy so we know that we need to pray against the enemy's tactics. We need to pray for our righteousness. We need to come against wickedness. We need to keep our soul right, filled with the word of God, our spirit filled with the will of God. Jesus did not come to save our spirit. He came to save our soul. The spirit of God, amen, um, knows that the flesh and the spirit, it tells us in the scriptures, they're always at war. So he didn't come to save our spirit. He came to save our soul, which is our will where we make our decisions, our emotions, amen? And our emotions, by the way, I've lear I learned this. I don't think our emotions are made to be fixed. I think our emotions are made to be felt. He wants us to feel. And once you don't feel emotion, amen, and once you don't care, and once you don't feel any conviction, you're in a worse space than a lot of people who are really serving the devil. 
because at least they're probably still emotional about that. They still care. They still have a conviction about serving the devil. But if you don't care about anything, I think you're in the worst spot. We're called. This is the Christ calling. The work that the Father requires us to do is to glorify him. That work was to die on a cross for the Lord and pay for our sin. I couldn't pay for your sin. You couldn't pay for your own sin. Jesus was the only one that could satisfy the sin debt. So that's why the Father asked the Son or called the Son to do what he did. Amen. And Jesus being the God man, 100% man, 100% God. I know that doesn't make any sense um, to our, our intellect right now. That's impossible, that equation, the standard thing, then you're trying to figure it out. How could you guys believe in the Father, the Spirit, and the Son? Because basically in the scriptures, that's the order. The order that's first mentioned in the scripture is Elohim, God, the Father, right? Then the Spirit, Ruach Elohim, then the Son. When Jesus shows up, He's the perfect image. He's the exact replication of the Father on earth. Then now it changed from the Father to the Son, then the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus now is grabbing his calling from the Father. Amen. And he knows that he has to go to a cross. Well, I sh- every time I say he had to, I have to re- you know, correct myself. He didn't have to do it. He did it because he loves you and he loves me. Amen. He could have literally, like he said to the rulers of that time, he said, if I wanted to, I could have called a legion of angels and get this done with. Forget you guys. Amen. I'm out. But he did it because he loved us. He demonstrated his own love. His love is not the way we love one another. He has agape life, love, unconditional love. His word has conditions. His love is unconditional. Anyway, I don't want to start preaching. Jesus had other tasks to accomplish Just like we have other tasks to accomplish. But let's keep the main thing. The main thing, let's keep the first things first. God called you and me to do something. We have a Christ calling. It's to glorify the Father. And you think that's hard? I don't think so. If if you're having a bad day in in your thought life and, and just like you argued with somebody, you cursed somebody out or anything, you say, man, I failed today. I didn't glorify God. No, that's not true. You could have another moment to give God glory. You could literally... Do something wrong. Go into the scripture and share the scripture with somebody. And watch how the Father is glorified through that. And they might look at you like, um, I don't think you're, I think you're crazy. <laughs> you just did X, Y, Z, and now you're reading the scripture to me. Well, we have to get back right somehow, some way. And the cheat sheet that we have, I call it, is the scriptures. The scriptures always gets us back on track. Why? Because when you speak the word of God out of your own mouth, you speak in life, you speak in freedom, you speak in power, you speak in authority, you speak in position. We're already seated in the heavenly places according to the word of God over our lives. Jesus had other tasks to do, right? But primarily, Jesus came to die. And I know it sounds like, man, that's that's a horrible, um, like in the way of mankind, the well, way we think that's a horrible mission you came okay you came to die man what's what's so fun or what's so you know what's so important about that are we all gonna die yes i'm gonna die the spy's gonna die my spirit remains with the lord my soul's already saved so i'm with the lord so a christian a christ follower who, one who believes puts their whole faith and trust in the lord literally right technically doesn't die the body dies did Jesus' spirit die on the cross? Did Jesus' soul die on the cross? No and no. His body died on the cross. But guess what? Three days later, what happened to that body? That body resurrected physically. If we had a resurrected Jesus that was just in the spirit, we would be a bunch of mystics, right? We would be like nothing to prove because, you know, spiritually, Jesus rose from the grave. Nobody could confirm that. Nobody... But Jesus rose bodily to show his disciples, to show the people around him. He showed up to 500 at one time, the scripture says. He went to the disciples, ate with them. He went through a door, so he had a glorified body now. But he, they could still see the scars on him. Like, he said, don't touch me. I have not ascended to the Lord yet, to the Father yet. So for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom. Right? And he had other things to do. But primarily, Jesus came to die and to serve. What about you? What is your work that God has called you to do? This is how you glorify God in the greatest way. 
you won't glorify God. This is what we shouldn't be doing. We won't glorify God by doing the work he's called others to do, but by doing the work he's called you to do. It's personal, but not private. So what is your calling? To glorify God. Don't stress yourself out. How, how could I do that? Read John 17, the whole chapter for yourself. And, amen, and you'll get a better understanding of what I'm trying to say on this Snapshot Morning Devo. Apostle S.A. Duke, God bless you. Welcome, sir, to the Morning Devo. It's good to see you. God bless you. So listen, I'm out of time, literally. <laughs> amen. But I try to stay um, to the time so that way you could go about your day. Amen. I hope you understand what's going on here on these Morning Devos. On every Friday, we call it Authentic Imitationology. Amen. And we're on episode 73. We try to focus on what the Lord is saying, what the Lord is do, has done, and what the Lord is doing through us. And we can imitate what the scripture says to do. Amen. So God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.